Oh, hey, what's up, guys? I think this is uh, Jay in Atlanta. You think it's Jay in Atlanta or it's Jay in Atlanta? <laughs> well, who knows? There might be another 770. You don't know. There's a lot of us. Okay. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Um, firstly, thanks for your guys' coverage of those trans issues. Um, I know your passionate coverage is inspiring, so keep it up. And Thank uh, thanks for the coverage of Cop City. I don't think any of us want that uh, here, but I was hoping to talk about uh, TikTok, actually. Sure. Let's talk about TikTok. So, um, obviously, the spectacle yesterday was xenophobic and a lot of grandstanding. Uh, but I think something that isn't really being considered so much is, although, yeah, Facebook and Twitter are the same sort of influence and uh, surveillance tools for the U.S. government, we don't have the same opportunity to operate those in China. So I think there's sort of a one-way street going on here. And I yeah. think there's no reason that TikTok shouldn't be allowed to operate in the U.S. But I think, you know, even if this wasn't a social media product, there would need to be some sort of, uh, uh, you know, there needs to be a reciprocity relationship there. Yeah. Well, Thank you. you know, uh, well, yes. I mean, I th that would be nice. But, you know, um, one of the one of the dilemmas for a society that is um, democratic is that um, they uh, are more susceptible. That society is more susceptible to certain things than a society that is autocratic. Right. I mean, like we, for sure. we're not going to get China to sign off on this. And I think like, you know, and that's why at the end of the day, like and, and listen, do you think Facebook couldn't turn around and sell this information to China? Do you think they wouldn't? Oh, yeah. I mean, no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, and, 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 and so... We I, have I, documentation of these social media companies. Expand our soft power. What's that? If this is an opportunity for us to expand our soft power by getting our social media accepted into China, I think that's a, an opportunity that should be examined. And I, everything you said there... But true, that's not going to happen, that's right? The, the point is that the I, I've heard for, like, years that it's authoritarian that China limits Google and Meta and Facebook and U.S. Silicon Valley based social media companies within their borders. And now we're trying to do it the same for the same reason as a way to drum up anti-Chinese sentiment. It's xenophobia, in my opinion. Um, like it, the, the you got, none of these hearings are coming from like a, a more thoughtful place that you're coming from, um, oh, where it's a more systemic Agreed. critique of big tech. It, it, just like all conservative critiques of of corporations and capitalism, it's just usually about some some racial undertone. They're too woke, the M and M's and the you know Mr. Potato Head and Disney. And then in this instance, TikTok's too Chinese, and we don't like Chinese people. So like it, there's sure. that, that is, that's the limits sure of the this. grandstanding that's happening. Yeah, yeah. Everything you said there is true. Uh, it, and yeah, uh, will it happen? Maybe not, but, you know, I think it's something that uh, I, it, it's disappointing to not see that be an opportunity used or, or at least examined. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. I mean, you could you could I mean, I, I guess the way that you would present it would be more like a trade thing. Like we'll open up our market to uh, your vehicles. You open up your, our, your market to our vehicles. Um, but, you know, the, it, it it does raise the the the, the question. Why is it why what are we worried about with China having this data that we aren't worried about about Mark Zuckerberg having this data? Yeah. Or, uh, you know, any of these other billionaires. I mean, the I, I, you know, I've seen stuff like they're trying to dumb us down uh, on TikTok, uh, you know, by 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 pushing the algorithm that is in somehow inhibiting us you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or dumbing us down. Or turning the kids trans. That's what Chaya Raychik said yesterday on frickin' Charlie Kirk. Well, I mean, like, I, I am all in favor, and I have said this in the past, like, we could simply say no algorithms. You don't feed us any, you don't, you do not allow these things, or the algorithm has to be similar, or you don't, you don't data scrape. Like, I say, like, let's come up with what we're comfortable in inhibiting on TikTok, and then apply that to all social media. Um, mm -hmm. We won't do that, of course, because these are behemoths. And, they, you know, that is an infringement on the free market that you can't allow these. Uh, but I, I personally, 
I, I, I would inhibit algorithms um, if I could, uh, without a doubt. Um, let's uh, listen to uh, some of that, uh, that hearings to, uh, yesterday. Should we go uh, with, uh, which one should we do? Um, let me just pull up the sound sheet right now. We can do, um, let's do number four, Darren right? Soto clip. Yeah, the Darren Soto okay. clip. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Darren Soto, uh, a Democrat from Florida, um, uh, and uh, taking testimony from uh, Chu Z Chu, who is the TikTok CEO. I'm really hoping we can get that done, and I'm really uh, excited about hearing that from folks. The other thing is that TikTok needs to be an American company with American values and, and its ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, this is something that will be critical as we look and go forward. And then three, we all agree we have to protect our kids. The committee should consider banning the use for children under 13 of not just TikTok but all social media platforms or at least empower parents. Uh, in addition, have rules of the road for teens that are 13 to 17 so that families can do what's right for their families. So for privacy, that's on us. Internet privacy is on us. As far as uh, being an American company, M Mr. Chu, you, as you know, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States at the Department of Treasury uh, reviews foreign investment that affects national security. Right now, they've negotiated with your company about this Oracle setup that you've talked about, servers in an American company in America and Texas, and then Oracle would monitor the algorithms. But pressure is mounting. So, Mr. Chu, would TikTok be prepared to divest from ByteDance and uh, Chinese Communist Party ties if the Department of Treasury instructed you all to do so? Uh, Congressman, I said in my opening statement, I think we are need to address the problem of privacy. I agree with you. I don't think ownership is the issue here. With a lot of respect, American social companies don't have a good track record with data privacy and user security. I mean, look at Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, just one example. So, so uh, I, I do think that you know it is not about the ownership. It is a lot about making sure we have Project Texas, making sure that we're protecting and firewalling U.S. user data from unwanted foreign access giving third parties to come in to have a look at this and making sure that everybody is comfortable. We're giving transparency and third party monitoring. And that's what we're doing for Project Texas. Well, so, OK, I just have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, the United States certainly does not have a good history with data privacy. Um, I'm old enough to remember the Edward Snowden revelations um, and the documents showing essentially how the U.S like was able to open the door into data privacy in places like you know google um and get people's data uh in mass with like a dragnet and we know that these companies have nearly like incredibly close i don't want to say symbiotic but very close relationships with our governments um in both the form of like say campaign contributions lobbying um and like literal federal contracts and I would not be shocked if Meta's extensive lobbying efforts, extensive campaign contributions, both in the form of dark money and what we have publicly, which trends a little bit more democratic. But we know that these companies like the crypto guys bragging that he does it behind the scenes to Republicans. So that's probably the case with a lot of these companies like that, that they had a heavy influence over the tenor of the that hearing yesterday because meta owns instagram that is yep. the number one competitor to tiktok right now and like it, the i hate the fact that that's a democrat up there saying the same kind of bullshit about the chinese communist party it is red scare stuff it is jingoistic xenophobic anti-china stuff that's going to contribute to domestically Chinese Americans experiencing more hate crimes. And the last thing I'll say there too is that, oh, I feel great about this proposal that Oracle is gonna monitor the data here. So all of this is just funneling towards a Republican uh, donor, Larry Ellison, now having like a new contract with TikTok where they're doing the monitoring and that's gonna be the end goal of this. Like it's all just such kabuki theater, it's ridiculous.
Well, I should ask that it's not just a a question of of you know uh, whether um, uh, people of, of Chinese descent in this country are going to you know get some type of blowback from this. We're also sending ships, uh, naval ships, yeah. right now to sort of test the waters uh, off of China. I mean, this is a this is one leg of a I don't know multi legged stool to uh, gin up animosity towards china so that we can i don't know if this is like some type of march to war but it's certainly some type of march towards like a some iteration of a cold war without mm -hmm. a doubt and there may be some security concern but at the end of the day like the ownership doesn't matter um you know what we need is transparency in terms of like what's going on with these algorithms but we need this with twitter too like i don't feel any more comfortable with saudi arabia owning a huge part of yeah. uh, twitter uh, than i do with the chinese communist party but i also don't feel terribly comfortable with any of these corporate behemoths owning these things either <laughs> i mean like let's go in with some regulations that we can apply to all of these social media uh, outfits that protects data that also inhibits algorithms from feeding people garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing, you know, you want to go and you want to follow like, you know, duct tape uh, uh, wallet, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, producers or I don't know, um, uh, beauty tips or, you know, uh, joint, you know, uh, wood joinery. Uh, what, what are the best routers to use? I mean, these are all good things to do. But uh, but uh, the, the way these algorithms work, they're feeding all sorts of garbage across all of these platforms. And um, I don't know, we should be breaking up all these companies so that we don't have to worry about Facebook being able to mount a, uh, you know, a national campaign to make it seem like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Chinese have some type of like uh, ray gun turning all our, our fish gay, uh, yeah. you know, through their algorithm or whatever it is. Well, I mean, and, and the whole like, you know, Republican obsession with uh oh the 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 twitter files right there's government uh influence in uh and, and they're they're cracking down on free speech as they're trying to to ban this social media app that tilts wildly towards the youth tilts much more towards the left the young people are like young the young people i sound old myself but young people using tiktok more frequently than other social media platforms and like there i i'm also just disturbed by the ramp up of this anti-China anti rhetoric in the face of what has been happened, what has happened with their brokerage of that normalization agreement with Iran and Saudi Arabia, because that tells me as well that all of this is about actually, like it's not just window dressing. This is a march to towards a cold war in reality, because they're terrified that the United States is belligerence in the Middle East and taking sides and then uh, like killing and using brute force against pe uh, people who uh, uh, are, are not on our like a uh, sensible side, like anyone that uh, goes against Saudi Arabia or Israel, like that has not bo borne any fruit. It's just created more chaos in the region. And then China steps in, is a more neutral broker, ends up normalizing these relationships with Iran and Saudi Arabia, and then they can dip their toe into both oil pools and they have more geopolitical resources. Plus they're connecting with Russia now. So that is what's pushing this anxiety forward. And oil anxiety from a national security perspective and that being a motivating factor for people in government hasn't ended well. So like that is what scares me about this. It, the TikTok stuff seems silly on its face, but it really isn't because it's a part of it's just the tip of the iceberg.